Mm. Hey, fellas. My daughter made this for me for uh, Christmas in one of her classes at school. Nice little tumbler with my face on it. <laughs> mm. Welcome back to another exciting video here at Prime Auto Works headquarters. And in this exciting video, we're going to be building Ming's 148 scale F4G. And you're going to say, didn't you build this not too long ago? And yes, I did. I did build this not too long ago on video. Um, you know, I, and, and let me start off. A lot of people had sent me uh, Happy New Year's and stuff. And if I didn't respond to you, I apologize. So Happy New Year's to all those people that uh, sent me well wishes for the holidays. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I've been trying to build some things. I built, started a few kits and nothing really worked out for me. And it's like, oh God, I just want to build something that I like building. So I decided to pull this one out of the stash and, and build another F4G. So I've got it all ready for primer. And I don't go in depth at all, really. Uh, there are a few things that I show that I, I would have liked to shown on the last video, like how I put the decals down on the instrument panels, because there's a little bit of a trick to it. Uh, how I paint the um, exhaust nozzles, I didn't show that last time, so I thought I'd show how I do that. And just a few other things. So nothing real in depth, but it does take about 30 minutes, so <laughs> I'm not sure. I had to cut it down because I, I started blabbing when I when I... When I start um, videotaping something, I start blabbing a while and then I go back and review it and I'm like, man, I would not want to sit through this. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's going to be in this video. And then the next video we're, we're going to paint, I'm going to do a three color camouflage scheme, the Euro scheme or the uh, lizard paint scheme, which is kind of cool. So uh, I'll quit blabbing and uh, let's get on with the video. So I thought I would cover how I'm applying the decals to the instrument panels on the cockpit. Now I didn't cover this on the last one, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll do it on this one because I've, uh, the method that I use, I think really works and it's, it's fairly simple, but there are some steps to it. So what I've done first is I've, I went ahead and I threw some gray down on the cockpit and all I did was just use some Mr. Servicer 1000. It's a little bit darker, I think, than 1500. So I, I got the uh, the gray color I think I'm looking for. And then I went ahead and obviously painted some black details and uh, and then applied a clear coat over it. Now the clear coat I used was Future or the um, the Pledge Floor Care stuff, just cheap stuff, wasn't that big of a deal. But I put the gloss down just so these would adhere a little bit better than they would normally on a flat coat. And um, what I've got here is I've got some warm water. I've got my decals. And as you can see, I've already done the instrument panels and those are looking pretty good. So uh, I've also got some Solvacet. Now I've, this is the strongest stuff that I have and that's why I like it. These, these decals can really handle that. It doesn't affect them a whole lot. Uh, I've got some Micro Sol and Set, but I don't think those do very well on these. I don't think they really do much to them. I've got some Q-tips and I've got these Micro Q-tips as well. I've also got my decal brushes. I've got this one that I use to apply the solva set, and then I've got this somewhat uh, soft but firm flat brush that I use to smush it down. And I've also got a hair dryer over here. Now the hair dryer is one of the most important things that I've got when laying these down. So let's go ahead and put this in the warm water. And. Uh, some people say you don't need warm water. I just I just think it works a little bit quicker on the decals. Loosen them, loosening them off of the uh, the backing. We ever uh, all of us kind of get settled into to what uh, we think works the best, and I think this works the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of solve set. I'm going to put it directly on here. Okay. And then we'll take decal still and it come up. Now, when you put your fingers on these decals, you want to make sure your fingers are wet, otherwise, it's going to stick to your finger. So let's go ahead and I've got my tweezers.
trying to get these aligned the best that I can. And this is the tricky part because I do have a lot of raised detail here. So it doesn't really want to conform right away. Line that up the best I can, okay? So it's not really conforming. Now, I could come in here and try to smash it down. Just trying to get this up a little bit farther. Looks like this decal might be a little long. And I think the reason is, is because I put this back piece in. So you can see this decal is like right up against that. And it's kind of moving up. Because I did things not according to directions. So I went ahead and put this back wall in. And so that's causing me a little bit of an issue with the, the decal fitting. Okay. Now I'm going to move the camera over. So I'm not going to smash this down yet. So I'm going to move the camera over. And use the hair dryer. So hold on one second. Okay. So I got my hair dryer here. And I've got it set on the high heat. I'm going to turn it on let it heat up. I'm going to heat the decal up as much as I can without melting the plastic. It's getting really hot. And I've got my finger behind here so I can tell how hot it's getting. And it really hurts. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take that flat brush, and it's, and it's a little wet. And I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to smush this down. And this brush allows allows the uh, how the brush gets in in between all those little raised dials and stuff and raised uh, switches, and I can smush that decal around all those raised details. Okay, now we'll come in here and do it again. Ah, that's really hot. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> I keep my finger behind there and I and I use the hair dryer to heat it up until I can no longer stand the heat on my finger. And that way I know I'm not gonna melt the, the plastic. It is really hard to melt styrene with a with a hair dryer, I found. It's pretty easy to do with a heat gun. But once once when when you use a heat gun or something really hot on styrene. I found that uh, it won't do anything, and then all of a sudden it'll just melt the crap out of it. So <laughs> it goes, it, it uh, flashes pretty quick. Okay. All right. I'll do that again. So let's go over and look at it. Hopefully you can see that one out of focus. So let's go over here and look at this. All right. Now I can take some more Solvacet. I can put it over top of here. All right, take one of these Q-tips, get it wet. And just roll over it. My small Q-tip here. Okay. 
Now for that excess that I've got, I'm gonna take a fresh X-Acto blade. And I'm gonna come in here. And hopefully they cut through that decal. It seemed pretty thick. And I can just lift that excess up. All right, and there we go. And now I've got my decal set on there and it looks pretty good. So I will let that solve a set set on there and then I'll come back and check it to make sure there's no little bubbles or anything. And then I can hit it with a solve set again and then hit it with a hairdryer as many times as it takes to get that decal to settle down in there. I think we're looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna repeat that process all the way around just like I did with the uh, instrument panels. And uh, that's my process of uh, applying the decals to the, uh, the instrument panels on here. All right, so the decals went down really well. I think they look pretty good. I went ahead and then I took some Tamiya, Tamiya Flat Clear and put a clear coat on them to protect them a little bit. I also painted up these resin ejection seats and I forgot what brand these were. The kit ejection seats are not very good at all. So uh, these look much, much better. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm doing some dry brushing. And for that, I'm using some XF19 Sky Gray. And I've got this old brush that I've got that's somewhat soft. So I'll go ahead, get most of the paint off. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to dry brush to bring out the highlights and dull down this straight black color that I've got on everything. Now I'm not going to do the actual instrument panels itself. I will do the the um, the black some black parts in there on the uh, in the cockpit, but I'm not going to do the instrument panels. I could come along and and dry brush those and kind of dull them down a bit, but I think it just it muddies them up a little bit more than what I want. So I'm just doing the black stuff. Okay, so that's how I'm doing that. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm painting the exhaust nozzles, and this is something that I didn't show on the last F4 build that I did, <clears throat> so I thought I would do it here. <laughs> Excuse me. And this time I'm doing some dry brushing. Now, I went ahead and I primered these with some... Mr. Surfacer Black, and this one is in the primer stage, and on the inside, I just did some streaking with the airbrush with some white. I didn't go, I'm, I'm not going to go, you know, uh, overboard on painting these, but I found a simple process to make these look somewhat realistic and a little worn and weathered, like I've seen in some pictures. So what I've got here is I've got some flat aluminum. And before I said I didn't use silver, but I'm using silver on this. So I've got this, or metallic I should say, because this is a flat aluminum. And then I've got some buff, okay? So what I did the last time, and I think works out pretty well, is I'm just gonna take some tape, and I'm gonna go along and just mark off a couple, two or three of the panels on here. like so. Maybe mark off another one. I 
Now I tried to do this with post-it notes, but because it's a kind of a rounded surface, the post-it notes don't stick very well. And because I'm going to be dry brushing, I'm going to be putting a little bit of pressure on here. Okay. So now I'm going to take some of my silver. And I'm just using the lid for this. And then I will take this uh, somewhat soft, these are kind of my dry brushing brushes. I don't use these to paint. Get most of the paint off. And I'm gonna come along and these areas that I've, I've uh, blocked off with the tape, I'm just gonna come along here and dry brush some silver. And what I'm doing is, I'm going in this direction. I'm not going up and down. I'm just going in this direction. And I'm going to dry brush this. I'm going to highlight these specific panels. So I'm going to go somewhat heavy with the dry brushing on the silver on just these panels. So if I get a little too much, it's not it's not uh, the end of the world. Okay, and same on this one. Now these are Tamiya paints, so they do dry pretty quick, especially when you dry brush. But I do want to make sure that I don't get fingerprints in it. I can always these are simple, so I can always just go back and spray over or strip the paint and go over it again. It's not that big of a deal. All right. So now that I've got this couple of these dry brushed, now I'm going to take some silver. And I'm going to go along the edges, the end here, and I'm just going to dry brush and be kind of willy-nilly with it all the rest of them, but I'm not going to go as heavy on the uh, the rest of the panels. I'm going to try to get the ends here where it really brings out that, that detail at the end. So I'll go a little bit heavier on the ends. And with this, I don't really care if I'm, I don't really want it to be uniform. I want it to, to be somewhat random. But I'm still going in that direction. Put a little bit more silver on the ends, like I said. And you can do this with other colors. In fact, I'm going to use the buff here in a minute. And I'm going to add just a little bit of buff and then dry brush the buff on kind of the same way, but I'm going to be just pick out areas with the buff. Okay. Now we'll take some of this buff, and I've got a different brush I'm going to be using. And again, this is a, one of my other dry brushing brushes. It's pretty frayed, somewhat soft but stiff. Okay, so I'm going to take some buff. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to be a little more particular where I put it. So I'm going to use this. Ah. I'm going to come in here. Just kind of hit some areas. I've got a little more paint on here than what I normally would use.
So there's no, it's not really rocket science and there's not a whole lot to it. I'm just trying to be a little random using a couple different colors. But I think the effect looks pretty good when you get it, get it all finished. And just, there's really not a whole lot of effort to this at all. Some people think you have to go all out to get a good result, but I think this looks pretty good. So now I've got a few little splotches in there of this buff color, just to vary it up. Now, I will also take some of this buff, and I do have some like white streaks. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there are some white streaks that I airbrushed in there. I'm just gonna take, take this buff and just dry brush the inside coming out. Now I could come in here with oil washes and stuff. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think this will be fine. A little more effort than I wanna, wanna put into these. So just do a little bit of streaking with a with a little wetter dry brush than I would normally use on the inside. Just to break up that black and white that I have in there. Okay. And I think that will look pretty good. Now I could come in here if I wanted to and do a little bit more silver in areas, but I think I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. I think that looks pretty good the way it is. So, um, simple, quick, and I think it will look pretty decent on the model. Alrighty, fellas, so let's, let's take a look at what we've got going on now. And I've got the front windscreen on, and you can see it went on really well. I used just a very small amount, the smallest amount of, of Tamiya Extra Thin, that I could use and I got it on there and it does not look like it affected the clear part. If you get too much on those, it really messes, it can really mess it up. So uh, yeah, I've got that down, it looks good. The, uh, the other canopies fit pretty well. Let's get those on here. So when I put these on, I make sure when I, when I, when I uh, fix these down, after I glue them, before the, the glue cures, I do put on the rest of the canopies to make sure everything's nice and aligned. Now this one is a little tight, but uh, if I need to glue it down for whatever reason, I think I can glue it down. And I'm not sure, uh, because I do have the framing in there, that might be pushing it a little bit. See, it'll, 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 it doesn't go all the way, but I think that's more due to the frame on the inside, not, not uh, squeezing in where it needs to be, which is fine because I plan on having it open. But I've got that in there, and this kit does supply you with masks. Now, typically what I do, I'll do is just use Tamiya tape. I'll put the Tamiya tape on the windscreen, and then I'll cut it. But this kit gives you masks. So I've been using those and they do actually work pretty well, but they are on this like clear acetate type film. And when you pull them off, it does stretch the tape just a little bit. So there is a little bit of a trick to getting these on because when you pull it off, this tape does stretch a lot. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say a lot, but enough to make a difference. So what I do is I usually start on this corner up here. And I will try to align it with the corner. And I don't know if I'll be able to do this on camera. There we go. I'm just gonna work this around. Well, and when it, it uh, since it does stretch, I can kind of stretch it to where I want it. 
Got that worked around there. And we'll come around. Work this around here. Then what I'll do, so I'll take a toothpick and I'm just going to start burnishing this down. It comes right up almost to that edge of where the clear part meets the gray styrene. And then I'll use one of my micro Q-tips. And I'm just going to burnish this down. And there we go. It fits pretty well. And uh, it'd be kind of nice if all kits gave you masks like this to mask the windscreens off. Especially on some of those uh, like World War II bombers where they've got a bunch of little little windows and a lot of framing. It'd be nice to have that. And I'm sure, I mean, these are just cut out of a, of a, of a, some kind of a cutter. I mean, that doesn't seem like that much of an expense, but it's just kind of nice that they supply you with those and they do fit pretty well. Now, I was going to go ahead and fill in the seam line here like I did on the last one, but I don't know. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to mess with it. Um, a lot of people don't mess with it, and uh, you know, I just don't think I'm going to go to that much trouble for that. I think it'll be okay. So, put these on here, just like so. And I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to glue this down to keep it keep it stuck down on there to act as a mask. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do because I don't normally build these with the canopies open. But we will figure something out. So there we go. All right, a little change of plans, fellas. So what I discovered was the little posts on here, they were interfering with it sitting flush without pressure. So once I clip those off, these canopies sit on here nice and flush. So what I've decided to do, since I will probably sell this when it's finished, uh, is I'm just going to go ahead and close up the canopies. And, uh, and leave it at that. It's just going to make things a lot easier down the road. So that's what we're going to do. I've got the seats glued in. I use five minute epoxy. And anytime I use uh, five minute epoxy, I like to leave the uh, my little mixture here with the toothpick in it. So I can always tell when it's cured without having to like move stuff around. I can just lift up my toothpick and see that it's fully cured. So my seats are in there nice and sturdy. And uh, I am going to glue these down. I'll probably do that tomorrow. I'll probably blow this out one more time just to make sure there aren't any greeblies in there. And, um, and take care of that before I do anything else. Just to get that all closed up so I don't have any other issues. Now, I don't anticipate doing any more sanding around here. These seem to fit better than what I thought they did. Um... So I don't anticipate doing any more sanding. If I had a lot more sanding to do, I would go ahead and leave this open just so I could blow everything out because inevitably stuff will get in there. But I think I'm going to be okay with where I'm at. So, all right. And that is it. I will see you once this is closed up. And uh, I think I've decided on the paint scheme. So we will uh, come back whenever I get that ready. I'll spray this area and then I'll prime the whole thing get these all buttoned down, prime the whole thing, and then start painting. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show something that I don't normally show, and it's really not that big of a, uh, a mystery, but before I get to priming it, and we'll take a look at the plane here, I've got the intakes on. I did have to use a little bit of filler inside, uh, on a couple little spots, like right there and on the bottom, and then a little bit of CA glue metallic pigment on a little seam right there. And on the other side, uh, now all the, everything is magnetized on the bottom. So I've got all my pylons uh, magnetized. I'm not sure if this is the one that goes on here. Yeah, just like that. So I've got all my, my missiles. I've got everything built that I'm going to build before I paint. Um, but one thing that I like to do, and I've already, you can see I've got gloves on. 
Before I prime it, I want to get all the oils from my hands from handling it off of the model and off of all the parts. So basically what I used to do that is I've got some isopropyl alcohol here. I've got some in a little, little uh, cup there. And I've taken all my parts, let's see here, and I'm just going to wipe everything down. Now for these smaller pieces and the pieces like the missiles, I just take some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and I just try to get all the oils off that I can. And I'll put them over here on paper towel. Um, but yeah, the brush comes in handy on stuff like this, on the like the pylons where there's a bunch of uh, detail and, and it's kind of hard to wipe down with a, with a paper towel. But some of these other things like the vertical tail fin, I'll use a paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol on it and I'll just wipe it down. Now I do have to mask off this clear part on here, so um, I'll, I'll probably end up redoing this. But before I prime, I wipe everything down. And then actually right before I prime, I'll take a tack cloth like this and I'll make sure I get all the dust and stuff off of all the little parts, just like so. And then I'll finally spray it. So there is a little bit of a process that I, that I use and I've got all these other parts to do and, and get all the oils off of. Um, but uh, just to give you an idea, it's something I don't normally show, but I think it's it's important when it goes to when it comes to uh, painting your model because nothing sucks worse than to to paint your model, mask some part off, and then lift the masking tape up, and then it, the the paint peels off, which is I think happened on the last plane that I did. I must have not got all the oils off of it. So. Uh, that will conclude this video. I appreciate you watching on the next video. I'll prime it. I pay, I'll paint it. I am going to do the lizard paint scheme, the or the Euro paint scheme, which is uh, two shades of green and then a gray color. And it's not only on the top, but on the bottom, which I think is kind of interesting. So uh, I will see you on the next video. And thanks for watching.